Sun Devil fans, it is a Thursday edition of the Locked On Sun Devils podcast. Today we're going to be talking to you about the NFL scouting combine. We have many ASU players there, so we're going to be talking about some bold predictions of how we think the week is going to go down. Then we're going to be talking about ASU and Cal in their rematch at home uh, for their second to last game of the regular season with the Golden Bears. Then we're going to talk specifically about the ASU Sun Devils as far as the baseball team goes. I was at the game on Tuesday night, so we're going to be talking about uh, kind of my th- thoughts and opinions up close and personal. You're listening to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of the Locked on Sunnibals podcast. Richie, stop doing that. I'm trying to record a podcast. Come on. Thank you. It's my All podcast. Nice. Welcome to another exciting <laughs> edition of the Locked on Sunnibals podcast. Uh, talking to you specifically uh, about kind of a multitude of things, right? We're talking about uh, quite a few, uh, really all the sports today, all the sports for ASU. All when the I say, sports. And when I say all, I really mean like football, basketball, baseball. So not really all we didn't like put in. Uh, their disc golf team. We didn't put in swimming, right? Anyways, thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. We are free and available on, on all platforms. Uh, those platforms, uh, uh, what could be Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or the Odyssey app. You can also find us in a visual platform for YouTube as well. You can follow us on Twitter. You can find me at Cedrios and find Richie at Richie Brads with a Z36. Also follow our Locked On Sun Devils Twitter page. It's at LO underscore Sun Devils. And again, you guys, we have content come Friday. We are free and again and available on all of those platforms. With that, Richie, let's go ahead and dive right into our content for today. We're going to be talking about some specifically for the NFL Combine. So we're not necessarily um, limiting this to just specifically like offensive or defensive players. We're not necessarily predicting the numbers for these guys, how we think they're going to do, strictly because we know we're going to be very, very wrong on that. Uh, so that being said, uh, let's kind of get into it, Richie. Do you want to start off with maybe one of your players and I'll even give you the category. So maybe even it is, it could be something like, uh, who has the most to gain from this weekend? Maybe who you think is going to kind of make the least amount of noise, anything like that. Well, I'll start with who has the most to gain. And there's two players that come to mind here. The first one is one of the guys I highlighted yesterday on the podcast, DJ Davidson. This is not a strong defensive line class and Teams are kind of grasping at straws right now, trying to find a guy that they can plug and play because outside of a Jordan Davis and a DeMarvin Leal, who are first round prospects, there truly is not a lot of depth behind them. And this is where Davidson can come in and take advantage, can really show off that brute strength that he displayed all year on the defensive line and that anchoring ability to make, make life so much easier for the linebackers and keep their jerseys clean. So Davidson is one of my guys that I'm going to be looking for, but more than anything, if there's one guy who can go from zero to hero, Connor, I I feel like it's no competition. It's Curtis Hodges. The fact that Hodges was invited to the combine was already a huge, huge opportunity for him, for a guy who was vastly inconsistent. Some of it on him, some of it on the offense, right? I'm not willing to pin it all on Curtis because there were opportunities where Curtis looked phenomenal. And I talked a little yesterday as well, how he's kind of that Joker move tight end that teams are starting to fall in love with. And if he can come out and he can have a good 40 time and he, he can look nice and fluid in, in receiving drills, the gauntlet in particular, don't drop any passes, just be that natural hand catcher that he seems to be. I feel like Curtis Hodges has the most to gain here because of, of the eight guys going, he's easily, easily, the lowest level prospect and you would still put guys like Merlin Robertson and maybe Tyler Johnson ahead of him, two guys who aren't going to the combine. So for me, it's DJ Davidson and Curtis Hodges. I would still personally put Tyler Johnson ahead of him. Uh, Him not getting invited to the combine was an an interesting move. Conversely, Curtis Hodges going there was, I I think a little bit of a, a surprise for both of us, but we like Curtis as a player. That being said, can he perform at the NFL level? Who knows? It's got to be the right name to want that drive, uh, but also having the right coaching staff in place and the right offense for him. So, But for a guy whose floor is so low right now in terms of only seven rounds of the NFL draft, 
totally, totally in line there. Now I'm going to go a little bit of a different direction. Uh, he, he's a little bit more of a popular player. That being said, I'm going to talk about who I think is the most, uh, or is going to be the most talked about Sun Devil after this week. Not a sexy name necessarily by any means. It's not, I'll give it away right now. It's not a Rashad White. It's not some sort of skill player. It's Donovan West. So I'm going to the center position, which you were talking about defensive tackles, two positions where I feel like year after year, it's really not that loaded with talent. Like seriously, like how, how often we really talk about like center being just such a loaded position. Just don't feel like it happens that often. Uh, so after Linderbaum, it, it kind of feels like a, a wide open competition for that number two spot. Are other teams going to view him as maybe a top two or three center? It's kind of, uh, kind of like Mel Kuyper did. Like he still has to have those conversations. He has to test well. But I, I think Donovan West is going to be, for lack of a, a sexy position, so to speak, I think he's going to be the most talked about Sun Devil after this week. I can totally see that because, like you said, center is not exactly a strong position group right now. But if he if he could really make himself money, Connor, if he can find a way to show that fluidness in his hips and the ability to anchor wh wherever he is on the line, showing that versatility to maybe kick out to one of the guard spots could be really good for him. And the best way to do that is to just look really good in like the three cone drill. And I'm, I'm not sure what the drill is called where the guy's got the ball and he goes left and right. And they, yeah. they have to follow where the ball goes. So just, just along those lines is how he moves is going to be really detrimental for his success here because if he can prove that he's not just a center prospect and that he can be an all around interior offensive line prospect, that's going to go a long, long ways for him. That's a sure. really good start in that right direction. So I'll go ahead. I'll take, I'll take another, um, Oh, what are they called? Superlative. I'll take another superlative here. I'll go with the guy I expect um, will be under the most stress at the combine like the guy who everyone's going to be looking at the most and paying attention. Sure. And I'm going to surprise people. I'm going to say it's Jack Jones because Jack Jones needs to interview better than any other player for Arizona state. He's got to interview as well as anybody else at the combine entirely. And he's got to prove that he can continue that success on the outside perimeter that he's shown the ability to do at Arizona state and in the shrine bowl game when he went over to, Las Vegas and just balled out there. So I'm, I'm hoping to see him put out a good workout together. If he can run in that low four, four range, that's going to go a long ways for him. And Connor, he's got ball skills. We all know that he breaks up passes. He finds his way to the ball with interceptions. And otherwise, if he goes through that gauntlet drill and he doesn't need to catch every single pass, but if he proves to be just a natural pass catcher, that's going to look really good for NFL teams who are sitting there and they're like, you know what? Maybe he's not the biggest guy on the field, but he's shown that he's tough and he's showing us again that he could probably make plays when the ball's coming his way. Yeah. That'll lead me to my second one. Sticking with a, a very essentially either similar position or player. I'm taking both corners here, both Jack Jones and Chase Lucas. I don't think either of them are going to make a whole lot of noise and for all the wrong reasons. Richie, you kind of talked about the East West Shrine Bowl that, uh, for players that, especially at the corner position, that aren't getting talked about a whole lot, can be a positive, right? It means you're not necessarily getting burnt repeatedly. Which was I'm very out. worried about what, right? And I'm very worried about their both their stocks overall. If I had to talk about uh, or at least list the Sun Devils, I, I would still list Curtis Hodges at the bottom of any of the players that, in my opinion, are, are like seriously draft eligible. After that, both the cornerbacks might be coming in that that rotation for me. Uh, I, I think there's been some other players who. Uh, like an example of DJ Davidson, uh, a guy who may not have garnered as much attention as either cornerbacks. I didn't more of a need for him. So as of right now, I'm going to be kind of going off what you were saying before. I'm going to be watching both the cornerbacks and Chase Lucas and Jack Jones this week, just because I think they really have a lot to prove. I, I think they they spent a lot of time, obviously, in our defense. We've gotten a really good look at them. Uh, Jack Jones, in my opinion, is a guy that plays with a ton of swagger, a ton Right. And Chase Lucas has played with us forever, a guy that we do like. I just, if you ask me if, if uh, I had to pick like five or six Sun Devils that I thought were going to get drafted, I'm not sure I would say either of them at this moment. No. And I don't necessarily blame you for thinking that. 
But here's the biggest obstacle for them and the biggest reason why they both need to have excellent combines. This is a deep, deep cornerback class. Yep. They have to find a way to stand out because they're everyone's over six foot, first of all. All like that top 15 corners are six foot or taller. They're all good press corners. Quite a handful of them have ball skills, Connor. And right now, there's not too much that's separating. Jack Jones and Chase Young or Chase Lucas, excuse me, from the rest of the mid tier competition. <laughs> if only, dude. Like, but it's just there, there's not too much sitting there right now where you're like, yeah, no, definitively, this is this is a big difference between between player A and player B, C, D, E, F, G. Like it's Sauce Gardner and Derek Stingley and Andrew Booth and after that, it's very muddled. Who's next? Is it Kyer Elam? Is it Trent McDuffie? Is it Aaron Gordon? Not Eric Gordon. Kyler What's Gordon. his name? Kyler Gordon. Thank you. Aaron Gordon plays basketball. But it, it's just one of those things where it's like, can Jack Jones find a way to get into that conversation with a Roger McCreary or a Kobe Bryant or a Josh Job? There, there's so many corners right now. And Chase Lucas is playing catch up as well because it, it just – what what do what does Chase Lucas do that's truly special? That's what the NFL is going to be asking. Obviously, me and you can sit here and we can say, well, he starts he starts first of all, he doesn't miss games. Short of this year where he missed, I think, two games, uh, he's got deceptively good ball skills. But it, it's just one of those things where I don't know if the NFL is looking at these guys and they're like, yeah, these are definitive difference makers. We're going to draft them. Like they they got a lot to prove, and that's where the combine is going to come into play for them. Yep. So with that, uh, do you have any more bold predictions? If not, I have one more. Um, I I don't I don't think so. I I think Kellen Deesh can come out of this as a big winner. I think I'll end with that. Is I think come on, come man, dude. I, I wrote that note before the podcast started. Don't look at my notes. So I was gonna say Kellen Deesh. I think makes the biggest jump. A guy who's definitely on teams' radars at a very important position in the NFL. Uh, but for uh, again, like a pretty similar position as far as corners go. Tackle's got a, a pretty decent depth as far as this class. So uh, for Kel Kellen Deesh, it's not so much him making a jump from like uh, tackle 30, right? Like the top 15. We're talking about him more in like maybe that top 10 to 15 range and seeing if he can jump closer to like tackle seven, eight, nine, right? Seeing if he can impress right. teams enough. Uh, so I, I think Kellen Deesh probably makes the biggest jump. Uh, but that being said, his bar is not necessarily super low. I just think he has a good week and can kind of make that push there. 100%. And Connor, it wouldn't be a Locked on Sun Devils podcast if we didn't bring up Darian Butler at least once. If Butler can go out and show that he's a freaky athlete, like if he has that terrific 40 time, and by terrific, I mean like mid to low 4 fours. He's not a 4-3 guy, I don't think so. And he can show how quick he can turn on a dime in like the three-cone drill and stuff like that. Just that opportunity to show off that like he's a standout athlete, not just this good linebacker who maybe doesn't translate if he shows off that he's got that freaky athleticism that we believe he does that's a huge win for him agreed so with that we'll go ahead and kind of table the uh this discussion until we get more throughout this week now we're going to be previewing the game against cal for the second time this year but before that we're going to talk to you guys about our friends over at run your pool this is the lockdown son of us podcast March Madness is less than two weeks away, and that means you need to start thinking now about where you're going to be running your brackets this year. Are you going with the usual, or are you looking for the best? We did our homework here, and we're running brackets with Run Your Pool. Along with standard brackets, Run Your Pool offers game types like Survivor and Pick X, both really fun in their own way. They have options to edit scoring, and they offer more intel to make your picks. All stuff you won't find at ESPN or CBS. If you got a business, Run Your Pool can help you take some of that magic, <laughs> madness magic and play alongside your employees or even gain customers. Plus, they offer full white glove, customer support, custom branding, and one of the easiest three-minute setups you'll find. Clearly, we believe in Run Your Pool because, like I said, we're running our brackets there ourselves, and there's no truer test than that. If you want to play against us for a shot of the cash prize, join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter Pure Madness at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. 
All the rules and details will be available there. That's runyourpool.com slash locked on for your chance to win a cash prize. We look forward to seeing and beating you there. Wow, rookie mistake. I was on mute. Uh, we are back with the second part of our, our podcast for today, previewing the second game against the Golden Bears. Now, Richie, this first time we, we played Cal, uh, Cal was not not much of a powerhouse, right? Uh, no. They their record essentially is about the same as ours this year. That being said, we got destroyed by Cal the first time we played them. Absolutely demolished. That game was not necessarily close. ASU did not show up to play. They lost uh, 74 to 50. And if you guys remember, this was the first game back, right? So they had, uh, what was it, maybe December? I'm going to mess up the date here. Like, they played a game on December, like, 17th or so. Then they had both Cal, uh, both uh, California games against, like, uh, USC and UCLA get delayed. Due UCLA to COVID. got delayed, plus, plus U of A as well. They had the game against, uh, gosh, I can't remember that team in Florida. That's going to bog me. Uh, but where there was that power oh. outage. North was Florida, 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 or North Florida. Or, no, it, it was North Florida. You're right. Something it like that. North so Florida. three games now, and they might have been one more cancellation, but January 2nd, they come back and play Cal after not playing for a while and get absolutely whooped by a not very good team. In that game, ASU was not very impressive. Uh, basically, you had DJ Horn kind of at the, the peak of his playing earlier this season, putting up 17 points. Second leading scorer was uh, Boachie with nine, had uh, double digits at all. It's not a very impressive game. They did not shoot well at all, whether it was from the field, three-point range. Uh, I guess they did make 9 of 11 free throws. Good for you. Uh, but they're looking to have a, a much different game this time around, Richie. And, and I would say we expect them to win this game, correct? Ab- absolutely. We, not only are we expecting it, but we need to win this game. You need yep. to end on a hot streak right now, Connor. you got to win these last two games, get to that 14-16 and 16 record, enter – the Pac-12 tournament with heat, with a hot streak going. And that starts with beating Cal tonight, essentially, and just proving to the rest of the Pac-12, like, hey, we're, we've are we arrived, okay? This is where we wanted yep. to be. This is where we're at now. So you guys better watch out because we are we are the not messing around crew anymore. This, this is the Sun Devils team we expected to see. Not winning every game, but being competitive and taking down the people that they're supposed to take down. Right. And there's nothing, it's not so much them saying you just a special team. There's not a whole lot special about ASU. There just there really isn't. Uh, but Cal is kind of the same, same side of that coin. Nothing too special about Cal. They got a couple nice players, uh, but after that, like they don't they don't play defense over or I should say their defense is okay, uh, but they don't score the ball particularly well. Uh, they are dead last in terms of points per games in the Pac-12 with ASU being 11th. So not a huge gap. It's probably about two points per game on average. Uh, they're a little bit more of an efficient team as far as shooting goes. But I mean, overall, like this is not a team that ASU just can't handle, right? The question is, how much can they build off of what they've done as of late? Can Marion Jackson continue his hot play? Uh, can they still get some some play from Jay Heath, right? Can DJ Horn at least be a contributor if he's not doing what he was early this season with 15 plus points per game. So the, the biggest question is, can they not implode, right? Like if they're not exactly. shooting themselves in the foot, it feels like this game's not going to be too hard for them to win. And to be honest, Cal's probably thinking the same thing and, and rightfully so, right? The ASU is playing better as of late, but overall these two teams have had a very, they've had some ups and downs, but more so down kind of seasons. Um, so I'm sure Cal is not necessarily like absolutely terrified to play us. Uh, as of right now, though, Arizona State is playing the better basketball and a team, again, that I think they'll be able to handle a pretty decent amount. You would think so, Connor. So I feel like tonight's game, the biggest opponent that the Sun Devils are going to face is themselves. And they're going to need mm-hmm. to find a way to overcome their shortcomings, which typically is putting teams on the line too often and finding a way to just get off of a rhythm. So ASU just needs to play the consistent basketball that they have found their groove in recently and spread the ball around Connor, Jalen Graham, Kamani Lawrence, DJ Horn and Marion Jackson are all playing great basketball right now. And you got Jay the Heath. guys behind them too. Jay Heath is playing well. You still have a uh, uh, Bache coming out occasionally and showing that big man ability that you were signing up for when he first got to the program. 
you've got plenty of guys who are playing good basketball right now. You just need to continue playing to your strengths. And with the chemistry that has finally been built, we're, and Connor, Bobby Hurley hit the nail on the head in his recent press conference when he was saying that it just, there were so many new faces and it took a while yeah. to gel. But now that it's gelled, there's something here. There, this is actually a team that's exciting to watch. So it just, you got to continue to play the way that you've been playing lately because you got a good thing going. There's no reason to get away from it and there's no reason to overthink it. Okay. This is just another team. There's no need to change up anything you're doing. And I would expect the same mentality with a number three U of A or a winless U of A kind of thing. Like just go into this game knowing this counts more than ever. And it's just a team. We don't care how good they are. We don't care how bad they are. We're going into this game with the mentality that we're going to win because we're better and because it matters most. Yeah. Tell you what, man, that's a, that's kind of a good segue because I'm, I'm curious how, how much this team is willing to get up for their opponent, right? Yeah. Yes. It's not, it's not who they played as of late, even like a Colorado who had won five uh, and, and got beat pretty badly to an ASU team. So uh, against uh, what was it? Utah, they had a pretty sizable lead and ultimately kind of gave that back up. Um, right. Can they get up to another good lead against Cal and kind of hold that down? That's kind of the way I expect this game to go, right? Not that it's going to be perfect. There's stretches where ASU seems to uh, maybe just can't hit the feet or whatever it might be. Uh, like this game's not going to be perfect for them. But that being said, as of right now, uh, I'm not looking at the spread just yet, but I, I'm going to be taking ASU in this game pretty handily. Uh, it, as of right now, I, I would think that they're favored. It's probably not more than about like maybe five and a half, I would think, four or five and a half, especially since they're at home. But I'm also going to be taking ASU to cover in this game without even looking at the spread. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. So for for our friends that love to bet from Bet Online, you know, the the what what is it? Uh oh my god. I, I can't think of their tagline. Richie, where, where, where the game starts. Where the game starts. Where the game starts. Yeah. You go to bet online, you take whatever the spread is. For once, Arizona State's gonna cover the spread. I'm calling it. I'm putting myself on the line. And if I'm wrong, you can at me on Twitter at Richie Brads36. Come roast me. I'm here for it. Speaking of betting for this game, we're going to go ahead and take our next break for the part of this part of the podcast, talking to you guys about our good friends over at Bet Online, and then finishing up today with a little bit of baseball content. But before that, we'll take our quick break to this next segment. So football season might be over, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From the latest odds, totals, player performance props, to where the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is their source for hockey, boxing, UFC odds, right to the Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to, uh, to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Now talking to you guys a little bit more about some baseball. I know we had kind of said that this was going to be more of a, a Friday thing, which we will be talking about this again on Fridays pretty consistently. Uh, but that being said, uh, I had a chance to go to the first game of the state. And game's kind of gone. It almost seems like how it's gone for ASU the rest of the season. They came into it three and four. They were up uh, four to one, I think, through seven innings, if I remember correctly. Seven innings. And Richie, you and I, when we kind of first talked about baseball earlier this week, we said that the uh, rotation had been really good. The bullpen had not been not very so good. Much. So, and the trend kind of continued into this game. Uh, it, it, essentially, it was just exactly that. We had uh, several contributors on offense, uh, but as far as uh, we gave up one run through seven innings, then we gave up four and two in the ninth, losing seven to five. So, uh, definitely a heartbreaking loss. And at the we know it's going to take Willie Bloomquist. Connor, are you still there? Meyer, however, uh, did you not hear me? Uh, just repeat what you just said. It kind of cut out for a minute. Sorry, can you hear me okay right now? Yes, go ahead. Repeat what you had just said for the nice people. 
what you had just said for the nice people. So I, it is going to take Willie Bloom put a little bit of time to get this program running. Uh, Tyler Meyer, as our starter, went six innings, uh, only gave up four hits, one run run, box and four strikeouts. Was impressive. So, uh, very impressive game from him. Uh, again, just about the rest of the bullpen. Uh, now, uh, Hunter Davis, the season, three for five, uh, a home run. Uh, so he, he definitely looks to power. Uh, and then Joe Lampy, dude's an absolute stud. Guy's got absolute wheels. Went two for four, but played just about every single time. Uh, did not strike out at all and had a walk. So those are definitely your two best offensive players so far this season. But until they can figure out their bullpen, and at least they have some time before conference play starts to figure that out, I'm not sure who Willie Bloomquist is going to have uh, any confidence going to. Uh, my dad and I, who were at the game, were kind of making jokes that uh, Willie's going to his fourth best uh, uh, fourth best bullpen arm when the first three weren't very good. So time will tell how this team can kind of come together. Um, but they, they at least have pieces. Again, I just don't think this is going to be the season for Willie Bloomquist. Probably not, Connor. Um, real quick, I just want to add to uh, Joe Lampy. Per source, uh, in this case, House of Sparky. And no. I, look, I, I, I understand your dog's excitement when we talk about Joe Lampy, but I, I do need him to just take it down a notch. <laughs> so get this. He actually dislocated his shoulder on a slide yesterday and the training staff put it back in and he insisted to stay out there. So if you want to talk about guys that you want to build this baseball team around and build the morale and it just, just to play hard for certain guys, Joe Lampy is definitely going to be one of those dudes to look out for this year because obviously he's playing good. He's playing hot and he's clearly like team above himself kind of guy. Those are, those are the kind of foundational pieces that you want to, that you want to really start to assemble, especially with a baseball program that's really kind of reshaping itself and finding its identity because so many guys got drafted last year. And uh, Bloomquist is obviously a brand new manager for the team. So a lot of unfamiliarity, Connor. What's unfortunate is, they, like you mentioned, they they were up four to one or something like that for the majority one, of the three, game. Seven. Yes. And then Six they and end up half. losing... Yeah, they end up losing seven to five. And this is for what it's worth, this was the fourth ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys baseball team. So to put up a fight is good. To lose is when you have a four to one lead is not great. And unfortunately, taking a look at everything, this is the fourth time that the Sun Devils have blown a lead late into the game. If they blow a lead in the seventh inning, they end up losing the game. They're 0 4, Connor. They they just can't allow those kind of late game collapses. And like we talked about a couple of days ago with the baseball team, the starters, great on the surface, right? That that bullpen, they've got Richie Bradshaw and Connor Drios on the mound because they just cannot close these games out. And I'm curious to know of those four losses we had from blowing seventh inning leads, do we win all four of those? I don't know. Probably not. Probably not, but but regardless, like you certainly have a better chance. Uh, chance. So uh, it, interesting that you mentioned Joe Lampy. I actually didn't know it was a shoulder. Uh, so I was sitting behind home plate watching that. Uh, he got kind of a bad jump off Humble second Brad. base. Uh, he got a, a, a bad dude. Tickets were like twenty bucks. Okay, it's so like when I say <laughs> I was behind home plate. Yeah, I, oh, I dropped a, a no big deal. I dropped like a mean twenty, maybe a little bit of change after taxes, but tickets were not that expensive. So uh, parking was more expensive, I assume. Actually, it was only like five bucks. So Ooh, okay, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe the Locked On Sun Devils crew is gonna have to sneak out there for a couple games. Yeah, until you have to pay like nine dollars for a hot dog. So that was cool. <gasps> uh, but unbelievable. Yeah, but Lampy, he got kind of a bad jump off second. This was in the first inning, so he hit a a, a double, which uh, landed just short of the wall. Got really good contact off that uh, early on in the game. Um, or he might have actually, yeah, I think it was a double. Because he ended up stealing a base early that game, too. Um, but either way, when he was going into third, um, catcher absolutely just gunned him out, got out after a bad jump. But he slid into the base. And, Richie, oftentimes when you see, like, baseball players sliding, uh, especially if they've had a previous injury, like maybe they have gloves in one of their hands, so it's it's closed. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe they even have, like, that, uh, like, literally a glove over their hand 
out their fingers a little bit. Uh, but he dove into the bag and almost immediately after he was tagged out, uh, like he rolled over on his side and was holding his his uh, his arm. And uh, he got up uh, and he ran off the field pretty quickly. But I mean, he was running with his wrist in one position, did not move it the entire time. I figured he jammed his wrist, so his shoulder, but uh, did end up coming about back after. It looked like he had some tape still around his wrist and it sounded like they put his shoulder back into place. So uh, definitely, definitely good there. But uh That'll go ahead and kind of do it for this part of the podcast. We will be talking a little bit more baseball, kind of wrapping up what is going on throughout the weeks on the Friday edition of the podcast going forward. Uh, But as we also have some insight from going to some of these games, we'll definitely be feeding that to you guys as well. Uh, But thank you so much for making Locked on Sunnivals your first listen every single day. We are free and available on all platforms. You can follow us on Twitter. You can find me at Cedrios and find Richie at Richie Brads with a Z36. We also have our Locked on Sunnivals Twitter page. It's at LO underscore Sunnivals. Follow all three of those accounts, get the most up-to-date information as far as Sun Devils news goes. Then you can also find us on multiple platforms, guys. Whether it's going to be an audio or a visual platform, you can find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube and see our handsome, smiling faces. Uh, So wherever you guys prefer to get that content, you guys do have options there. Uh, Now make your second listen. Uh, It's it's going to be... uh, Sorry, well, it's going to be Locked On NFL Draft with Ryan Tracy and former NFL quarterback Eric Crocker, bringing the NFL draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You're listening to the Locked On Sunnables podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.